Every other month, I write an article for Nuts and Volts magazine. It's about 3D printing, and the theme is things you can print with your 3D printer for your electronics workbench. Now, one of the articles that I submitted was for a toy traffic light with working LEDs and electronics, but it really didn't fit the theme, so it never got published. So I recently published it on my own blog at lproducts.com. But in the process, I realized I never finished what I wanted to do because the base was designed to hold the electronics but then be powered by USB. I wanted to make it battery powered. So I designed a new base that held the batteries. And I'll show you how I made all of this on today's Filament Friday. So I started with this traffic light model from user Halguero on Thingiverse. His original design only had a single row of LEDs, so it was hollow inside. I wanted separate LEDs, so I brought in the Tinkercad and I made this x wall so each row of LEDs was individual. And then I grouped it all together and made it into one solid unit, exported it as an STL file, and printed it on my DaVinci 1.0. And here's the head after I'd cleaned out all the supports. I just used a paper clip to clean out the channels where the wires would go. Now I had to use some really thin wire and there were going to be a lot of them. So I used a 28 gauge wire that I had, slipped it up through the head up to the top slot because this would be the power lead for the first LED or the red LED. And then I fed it through the base and then cut it off on the bottom so I'd have enough to connect to the electronics. And then after I did that, I pulled the base away and used this wire as a measurement tool for the rest. So here's a bunch of the wires already brought in. I'm bringing the middle one up. And then after this, I just got to solder on the LEDs. So I went to my parts bin and I got a bunch of green, red, and yellow LEDs. I have a bunch of these around. So then I bent the leads out and I used my third hand, my helping hand, to hold it in the alligator clips. And then once I got the wire, the green wire, to the positive side, I just gave it a dab of solder and then the white wire to the negative side and gave that a dab of solder. Once that was set, then I just needed to cut off the excess LED lead and this one was done. So once I got three LEDs done, then I decided to glue them in place. So I pulled the wires down and then I borrowed my wife's hot glue gun because hers is a lot smaller than mine. I just put a dab of glue inside and then pushed the LED into the glue. This worked great. So then I hooked them up to my electronics and ran it through the program just to make sure that each LED was working. Then I went back and did the rest of them. And here's the finished electronics all wired up in its spaghetti mess. And then here's the base that I need to enlarge to make room for batteries. So I made a triangular base and cut off the top of it so it was flat. Then I imported that original base and put it right on top of it. And then I hollowed out the bottom of this thing to make room for the battery case and made a little hole for the wires to pop through. So this was actually pretty simple to do in Tinkercad. And I made an STL file and printed this on my DaVinci 1.0. And here's the finished print and it came out really good. So now I'll take the battery pack and I'll feed the wires through the hole. And then I have to push this battery pack into the base. And it fits pretty tight, which is a good thing because once it's in place, it's not going to fall out. And this battery pack is designed to hold the batteries so they won't fall out even though it's upside down. So once I get this fully pressed in, now I just need to connect the electronics and put on the top. So I'll connect the electronics to the battery pack and then I'll screw this thing down to the base. Now getting all these wires to fit in there took a little finesse. I mean you don't want to force it because those are pretty weak wires but everything seemed to go in smoothly and there was plenty of space for this. And then I just needed to shoot the screws. Now there's four screws that can actually go in. There's four points, but I just used two because I only had two self-tapping screws. And then once I had that done, all I needed to add was four AA batteries and this thing should come to life. And they fit pretty tight because of those walls, but man, this is great. They're not going anywhere. And here it is, fully working. Now it's a little hard to see because of the bright lights of the camera. But it goes green, yellow, and red. And on the opposite side, of course, when one side's red, the other side's green. And here it is, standing by itself. Turned out great. So there you have it. 
I combined some of my electronics knowledge with 3D printing. Made a fun little project out of it. So if you like this, give it a thumbs up. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you like it and you want to see more. And if you want to help the channel, a dollar a month my Patreon account goes a long way. If you want to see more about this, go check out my blog and see the article that I wrote. Now it doesn't include the base, but includes schematic and a few other details. That's it for now. I'll see you next time.